All right, guys, welcome back. This is part two on our slope deflection method example problem. This is exactly where we left off in the last video. The only thing I added in is I filled out the, uh, the expressions here for the fixed end moments. So we have those in kilonewton meters. But now what we want to do is we want to just plug and chug those guys and a bunch of other stuff into the uh, into the slope deflection equation that we've got here. Now we want to do this four times because we're going to use it to solve for MAB. MBA, MBC, and MCD. So each time we do it, we're basically just going to replace I and J with the letters respectively for the, uh, the internal moment that we're looking for. So we'll come down here. All right, so we have MAB. So basically we're just using this. We're replacing all the I's with A's and all of the J's with B's. So when we go through, we get two EI. This EI is the, sec the, e the, the flexural rigidity in this region of, from A to B. Um, in this case, it's constant the whole way across. Um, LAB was uh, 10 meters, so we'll throw that in. Uh, now this will be theta, 2 theta A, so we get 2 theta A plus theta B, and now we have plus the fixed end moment AB, so FEMAB is negative, 88, uh, negative 83.333 kilonewton meters. And uh, so there we go. This is the expression for it. But we know from up here that theta a is uh, is equal to zero. So what we can do is we can cross that out. That becomes zero. And then we can just simplify this just a little bit. So we'll get uh, zero point two e i times theta b uh, minus eighty three. 0.333 is going to be equal to our MAB there. MAB. All right, now we're going to redo this equation again for the second time for MBA. So this bit time we're basically just putting in uh, the, all of, a B for all of the I's and an A for all of the J's. So it's going to get switched around just a little bit, but we still have two EI uh, over the length of BA. It's the same as the length of AB. It's just going to be 10. It's the same as Ben. Now, we have two theta b plus theta a. Then we get plus fixed end moment b a. Um, so that is positive 83.333. Positive 83.333. And if we go and simplify that just a little bit, we again recognize that this theta a is going to be equal to zero. And so this is going to reduce just a little bit down to 0 0.4 ei times theta b. Um, plus 83.333, this is going to be equal to MBA. Ooh, okay, so we want to do that again two more times, and uh, I'll just fast forward it, I guess, guys. We're just going to put in MBC and MCB. So just be careful when you're inputting these that like uh, the first letter here is getting replacing all of the I's, and the second letter is replacing all of the J's, and then they switch when we switch the order of this. This length down here is the length of BC, which is also 10 meters in this problem. And then we're getting like yeah, that negative 62.5 and then that positive 62.5. All right, and again, those theta Cs, those were also, um, we determined those to be zero here because of that rigid connection in the, um, in the original problem there. So coming back down here, uh, the other thing that we have is this compatibility equation, which is MBA plus MBC is going to be equal to zero. So that means basically what we want to do is we want to take this expression and this expression and add them together to get zero. So we'll write that here. We have MBA plus MBC is going to be equal to zero. So all we do is we literally are just going to copy and paste. And then uh, we can simplify that a little bit, so we'll get uh, 0 0.8 EI theta B, and that's going to be equal to negative 20.83. And then we can uh, isolate for theta B, which was our unknown, and uh, that's going to be uh, minus 26 0.0375. Over EI. Nice. So let's put a box around that because what we're going to be doing is now that we know theta b, we're going to be substituting it in to all of these four equations because it was unknown there, 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 and there. And once we plug it in, we're going to be able to find out what all of these moments are. 
All right, so now that we have all of the moments, what we want to do is we want to come back up to the free body diagrams that we had been drawing. And so we're going to grab those. Oops, uh, let's try that again. So we're going to grab it like that. Boom. We come back down here and we are going to paste it. So now what we want to do is we want to fill in because we actually just calculated what we have for MAB, MBA, MBC, and MCB. So let's go and uh, bring this down to the space that we're going to be working in. So it's going to be something like that. All right, so now that we can see them, will we work at the same time? Okay, so when we're looking here at MAB, we got a negative sign, so that just means that it is opposite from the way that we originally drew it. So we're gonna come down here, we're gonna update the direction of it, and we're gonna write this on, and uh, there we go. So we got that. As soon as we write that, we're just gonna get rid of this because this negative sign is gonna start confusing us if we look back at that again, now that we've switched the direction or the sense of this moment. And then we're gonna look at MBA, it's positive 72.92, so it is in the sense that we originally drew it, so we got 72.92. Again, let me get rid of that as soon as we're done with it. And then when we look here at MBC, we put a negative here, so that means that we assumed the wrong direction, but we still had to assume it that way basically for this whole thing to work out properly. But it's going, turns out it's going the other way, so it is 72.92 going the other way. That looks perfect for us because that means we're getting that moment equilibrium right at that point because these are equal and opposite. All right, so let's get rid of that. And then MCB here is just, uh, it was positive, so that is going to be 57. 0.29, that's kilonewton meters, and then we can go ahead and erase that. So in real life, we have these internal moments at the end of each span that are oriented as drawn in this picture with these magnitudes that we've identified. Cool. So the next thing that we want to do is the only unknowns that are left at these ends are the shears, and we can really easily find the shears uh, by first taking the sum of moments about some point. So let's first do uh, the sum of moments uh, for one beam at a time. We'll do the sum of moments about A, and we're going to find that VB1 is equal to negative 48.38 kilonewtons. So that means it's actually going up. And uh, I drew this on in the positive sign convention, um, you know, that we use for bending moment diagrams and shear force diagrams, because that's coming next, um, where we have the positive shears like that and the positive bending moments like that. So this is negative, uh, and this number is negative, so it's opposite, so it's going up. So it's going up to the right, which again would be like a negative shear. So um, this is actually going to be negative 48.438 kilonewtons on the shear force diagram just to the left of point B. So that's that works out really nice. Um, but then what we do is we do the sum of forces in the y direction. So it's just 100 going down and then 48 going up. Um, so therefore, the shear at A is going to be positive, it's going to be, as we've drawn it, it's going to be going up, uh, and that's going to be 51.562 kilonewtons. And it's the positive value here, but it also matches the uh, positive sign convention, so this is actually going to be a positive shear, internal shear on our shear force diagram uh, of 51.562 when we draw it in the next video. Okay, so looking at the next beam here, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to take the sum of moments about point B here, and we're going to find that VC is negative 23.437 kilonewtons. So it's actually going up, and then when we take the sum of forces in the y direction, we have 50 minus 23.437. Uh, we're going to find that VB2, this guy over here, is going to be positive, so the direction will be correct that we've assumed, and it's going to be 26. 0.563 kilonewtons. All right, so now we've actually, we've solved all of the math that we need to do. We know the internal bending moments at each end of the spans, and we know the shears at each end of the spans. Um, so we're equipped now that we're able to draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. And so we're gonna do that in the next video. And then we're also just gonna be able to label what the reactions are at A, B, and C.